Hello, everyone. I am Cody. And I'm Brent. And we are the Hugo Knots. And we are rolling out the red carpet here at Worldcon 2022 for interviews with authors and content creators. We are here with Jonathan Strawn from the Cood Street Podcast, uh, also an editor of So Much Sci-Fi. Very excited to talk with him. Welcome to the red carpet at Worldcon. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. So, um, first of all, very traditional red carpet question, what sci-fi author would you most want to get dinner with? That is a murderous question because there are some people <laughs> who are just enormous fun, right? Yep. Probably the, the least well-known writer I'd love to have dinner with is Howard Waldrop, a textual mm. short fiction writer who is colossal fun. But if I could go back, I'd be fascinated to sit down with Cordwainer Smith, who, uh, if you're familiar with his work, was the, part of the inventor of psyops and all this kind of thing and was Chiang Kai-shek's uh, stepson. Oh my gosh. I know, I know. Okay. So that would have been a thing. That's a great one. Uh, love the double answer, both, both wonderful. Okay, so um, first off, for us and our listeners, can you just tell us a little bit about um, what you do on your show? Okay, uh, on my show? Yes. Okay. On the Cood Street podcast, I, I, ch I chat with Gary K. Wolf. It grew out of a, in fact, a previous podcast that I used to listen to called The Word. It's a music podcast and they would talk about various issues around the field. On Cood Street, Gary and I sit down and we talk about science fiction as we remember it and as we're experiencing it. And we try and bring, you know, writers in and get expose them to our audience. Okay. So it really is a sort of a, a deep dive into the minutiae of science fiction. Wonderful. And what kind of person do you think is most likely to enjoy your show? Oh, she's, oh. I'm tempted to sort of joke and say an old person. But no, <laughs> I think I think if you you might enjoy the the show if you're up for a very sort of casual, free-form opening conversation. If you're interested in science fiction and you might want to sit at a bar with somebody and uh, chat with them, it's that kind of vibe. Okay, excellent. Um, and then for you personally, I'm very curious, uh, in your life, how did you like get into science fiction at all? How did oh, this happen nepotism. for you? Nepotism, no, <laughs> no. Uh, I, went to, I used to go to conventions when I was much younger okay. and there was a convention where they were promoting doing your own fanzine. Not something I never considered doing, yeah. but it was something like, well, we could do that. And some friends and I started one. It was quite successful in Australia. Then I came out to a Worldcon and I met a girl. Mm. And the girl uh, was the managing editor for Locus Magazine. Okay. I ended up being brought out to America to work with them for a year. I became friends with Robert Silverberg and his wife. And there was a fateful uh, dinner where Robert and Karen were editing these books and they were overdoing them. They were going to do something else. And they just turned around and said, well, do you want to do them? And I went, Sure, and everything else followed from there. Yeah, so truly, nepotism. I mean, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. Um, so, uh, on that note, I'm, I'm very curious to hear about how you put together um, an anthology, because it seems like an overwhelming task. I mean, you've done so many of these, a lot yeah. of them have sold quite a lot of copies, you're clearly very good at like, but how do you even begin thinking about what the pool of possible stories would be, how to narrow it down, what's your process like? Well, I mean, the process starts from, a, from an idea which hopefully is as simple and as clear as possible. So, you know, like I'm going to do a book of space opera stories, for example. Okay. So then it's like, well, I'm reading because one of the things I've been doing for the last 20 years is doing a year's best science fiction and fantasy. So I read widely in the field. So it's like, who is doing interesting work? What is the common element in that that would make this an interesting book? And then I invite them to take part in it, package it together. So really, it's, it's not as complicated as it looks. It just takes a lot of time and you need to be aware of what people are doing. And then there's braiding the thing together. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So you must read incredibly widely in short stories to be able to, to do it that way. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, not the, the only person, but it absolutely does take constant reading because there are many, many magazines. I mean, once upon a time, it was estimated there was about three and a half thousand original stories published every year in science fiction. And now it would be probably 10,000 plus every year. Yeah, yeah, I, I cannot believe how many different yes. publications there are now. Yeah, it's truly incredible. Um, okay, great. Um, and uh, would also love to hear you work, so you work as a consulting editor for Tor.com, right? I do. Right? So for people who aren't familiar, uh, everyone in science fiction knows what Tor, who, who Tor is, sure. of course. Can you tell us about just the differences between what's happening on Tor.com and like, you know, Tor publishing traditional novels? Okay, I mean, I probably want to put in a caveat here. Okay. I'm a consulting editor, which means that I work outside their corporate structure, if you will. Okay. I find, th find work that I think is going to be interesting and people are interesting to work with when I come in to see them. So I think that that's the thing. So there's maybe other factors come into play. But to me, to me, seriously, the difference is I think that Tor books 
developed itself since 1985 when it was set up as the core genre publisher in the world. Uh, they publish the oldest and best names in many ways, along with you know, new interesting stuff, but it's really core stuff. Tor.com came along as a new idea, and it's a real, it was a real R&D uh, thing. And I think it was coming up with what Tor books should look like halfway through the 21st century. Hmm. So I think Tor.com literally is the future version of Tor being road tested to see how it goes. Oh, very interesting. Okay, great. And it tends to be younger and more diverse and that kind of thing. Yeah, very interesting. And do they publish... Um uh, I'm exposing myself here. I read almost exclusively novels. Sure. Um, so on Tor.com, what, what's the sort of uh, variety of, of uh, lengths that are getting published there? Okay. There are, on Tor.com, the website, Yep. they publish short fiction of various kinds. So you are going from a, quite a short short story up to about 17,000 words where you're beginning to hit novella length. Yep. Tor.com publishes novellas, which are usually 17,500 to 40,000 words long or so. Yep. Novels and uh, anthologies and short story collections. But oh, but they're under the Tor.com imprint. They are indeed, yes. Very so interesting. So for example, okay. Charlie, Charles Stross, his laundry books now come out through Tor.com. Oh, yeah. I see. I did not realize that. Okay, all right, yeah. well, that's great. And yeah. that makes sense then, what you're saying about the sort of the, the, the pivot. So anyway, yeah. that's great. Okay. Um, so I would love to ask you about this year's Hugo Awards. What was your vote that you were most excited to make for, for any piece of, of content this year? It doesn't have to be best novel, but what was the thing you were most excited to vote for? Brett, you kill me. You really, I mean, you're killing me here because <laughs> I edited three of the novellas that are in the best no novella ballot. You know, so A Spindle Splinter by Alex Harrow, uh, The Past is Read by uh, C Catherine Valenti, and Fireheart Tiger by Aliette de Bodard are all my babies. So you didn't vote for, for you can't tell us so, who you voted for, of course. Um, my heart is, <laughs> is torn between those. But I mean, I was really excited to vote for Arcady Martin's A Desolation Called Peace, hmm, okay. which is one of the best center of genre space opera novels for the 21st century that I've read in a long time. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, great. Um, and finally, um, if one of the projects that you were involved with or your podcast uh, wins a Hugo this year, who's the first person you're going to call? Going to call my wife. Yeah? Yeah, she's back in Australia, so she'll be the first. Will she still be excited, or has this been happening for too long that she'll, she won't she'll be She'll be excited? really excited. I mean, okay, I mean this is my you know, like 21st nomination, yeah. and we've won once. And I wasn't in the country for it, so... Yeah. Okay, okay, so it'd be a big deal. All right, great. Well, if you do win, call us. We want to come to Thank your you party. Much. Yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right, well, hey, it's been so wonderful talking with Thanks. you. Thanks, and it's uh, been great to meet you as well. Anytime. Thank you. All right, awesome. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.